Hello viewers, Ford DIYers here with another tutorial video for everyone. In this particular video here, I'll be showing you how to rebuild brake calipers on your vehicle. For this, I'm using a 2006 Dodge Ram 1500 as an example. These are two piston calipers, however, the same process also applies to other models of calipers as well as single piston calipers. Being that this truck is going in for safety, this does need to be repaired. When I priced out new calipers, they were about $150 per side and a rebuilt kit was about $20 per side. Calipers will need to be rebuilt if they are leaking, sticking, or have ripped boots, which this does have. And you'll see that in a moment. Elevate the vehicle and remove the wheels of the affected calipers. First is breaking the cap loose in the master cylinder reservoir to relieve any pressure buildup when compressing the calipers. Using large interlocking pliers to compress the pistons if possible, this will make the removal process easier, especially if you have a lip on the rotor. Next is loosening the caliper pin bolts. Don't remove them just yet. Pinch the rubber flex line so all the fluid doesn't drain out from this line. It's not necessary, but it does help reduce the amount of air in the line. For this, I'm using locking needle nose pliers with rubber hose wrapped over the tips so it doesn't damage the line. While the caliper is still in place, use the appropriate size to socket to break the bleeder screw free. The caliper is in a stationary position, so it's a bit easier to work with the bleeder screw if it's seized. Being that the caliper will be rebuilt, you can use a little heat from a propane torch. Try not to strip it. If it does happen, replacements are available. Disconnect the line. There is a couple different versions. This one uses a block and banjo bolt. This is a bit nicer to work with as the line doesn't twist. Others do have a fixed fitting where you need to rotate the caliper to disconnect the line. Fluid will come out of the line, so there is a drain pan directly below the caliper. Make sure the brake fluid doesn't come in contact with the pads or braking surface. Finally, remove the bolts and then pull the caliper off. Flip it over to help drain some of the fluid inside. Do not let the brake fluid come in contact with the vehicle's paint. It can cause damage. Some fluids are more harsh than others. Using brake cleaner, wash the caliper to remove any dirt or brake fluid. Even spray the cleaner inside the caliper. This will reduce the amount of fluid being sprayed out when the pistons are removed. Here you can see a better view of the broken dust boot. The purpose of the dust boot is to keep dirt and water out from around the piston sealing surface. Water can cause rusting. Both the rust and dirt can cause the pistons to stick or the seals to leak. Using compressed air, I set the regulator to 50 psi. Too much pressure will push the piston out with too much force which may cause damage and you have a higher risk of harming yourself. The blowgun has a rubber cone tip. This works great for pumping up the caliper through the fluid port. Make sure the bleeder screw is tight too. Keep your fingers far away from the pistons as they can come out with force and I'd also recommend wearing safety glasses. Use wood or plastic to give the pistons something to hit against. Don't use the frame of the caliper or steel as you can damage the pistons. It helps if you have something wide enough where you can push both pistons out almost fully. That way if one sticks, you won't have to struggle keeping the other one in place. Once one piston is removed, there's nothing holding back the air pressure. If the one piston comes out too soon, then push it back in and wedge something in place until the other one comes out. Another option is pumping the caliper up with grease. This is more cleanup, however you can apply more pressure as the grease won't compress as much as compared to the air. Next is removing the dust seal. These just fit into a slot and they can sometimes be stuck in place due to rust. When buying a seal kit, they come with both seals, the dust boots and the inner fluid seal. Clean the pistons using brake cleaner, then inspect them to ensure there is no excessive rusting, pitting, scrapes or any other types of damage which can cause leaking or premature failure of the seal. Then finish up washing the caliper with brake cleaner, removing any brake fluid. Clean up any loose rust or dirt using a wire brush. This will help prevent any contamination when the new seals are installed. And give it a final wash using brake cleaner again. Using a standard screwdriver or a scriber, something which can clean the groove sufficiently, remove any dirt or rust in the dust boot slot. Then finish up with a wire brush. I have left the fluid seal still in place as it does protect its slot from any damage in case the screwdriver does slip. Compressed air can also be used to help blow out any debris. Finally, use a standard screwdriver to remove the fluid seals. Gently remove them. Don't damage the slots as this can cause a leak. 
Use 600 grit or higher scuffing pads to clean up the seal's groove. The inside of the piston cavity isn't machined like you may find on other models of calipers. It's just a rough casting surface. The only machined areas is the seal grooves. If it is machined, you may need to go over it using a bray cone. This will remove any surface damage. Here I have a bray cone. As you can see, it does have spring-loaded arms, which would have small abrasive stones. When using a drill, it would remove any light material. After that is using 1000 grit scuffing pads to clean up the pistons, removing any debris. Don't use anything too harsh where it may remove the plating on the pistons, causing rust. New pistons can be purchased if yours are damaged. A brass brush can also be used. It is softer than compared to a metal brush to remove any light corrosion. Make sure the groove on the pistons are clean for the dust boots. When done, I like to finish up with a metal polish to leave a clean finish, which will ensure you do have a good sealing surface and all the surface debris has been removed. Then give it a final clean with brake cleaner so the brake fluid won't be contaminated. Wash the caliper with brake cleaner. A view of the fluid seal grooves before they're installed. Here's the new fluid seal, and as you can see, it's a square style O-ring. This cannot be twisted when installed. There is only one fluid seal for each piston. Only use brake fluid as a lubricant. Anything else would cause contamination. Apply it to the seal grooves. Then install the seal. Brake fluid can also be applied to the seals too. Do not let the seals come in contact with any dirt or rust. Here's a view once the fluid seals have been installed. Next is installing the dust boots. Again, brake fluid will need to be applied to these as a lubricant to help assist with the installation. They only install in one orientation. Styles do vary. These ones here have a square ring which clips into a slot on the caliper side. The opposite side, which is able to expand and contract, would be facing outwards. Now the pistons can be installed. More brake fluid is applied to the outside surface where the seals will be in contact with. This does get a bit messy, so make sure you have a clean rag or paper towel handy. Here's a couple methods for getting the dust boots around the pistons. The first one is using a block of wood to hold the pistons in place, then use compressed air to push out the inner surface of the dust boots. I wasn't having too much luck in this situation, so I used a standard screwdriver to pull the seal around the piston. Slip it over the one side, then pull the rest of it around with a screwdriver. Make sure the screwdriver is dull. If it's sharp, it can damage the dust boot. When that boot is around the piston, then push the piston down into the caliper. Don't hammer it, just use a piece of wood and the force of your hand. Here's a view once the first piston is in. Do the same for the opposite piston. Again, make sure it's well lubricated with brake fluid and pull around the dust boot on the base, using the standard screwdriver to assist the boot. When those pistons are fully pushed back into place, the dust boots should clip into the groove on the pistons. If not, then use a standard screwdriver to help direct them into place. Wash away any excess brake fluid using brake cleaner. And another view once both those pistons are installed. Make sure both of the boots are evenly retracted with the pistons. They should not be twisted or deformed. As another example, here's the caliper from the opposite side. Again, giving it a quick clean with brake cleaner in the drain pan. Another view so you can see the pistons being popped out this time. Using wood as a barrier, pump up the caliper with air and push the piston out. Both are coming out somewhat evenly, however, one eventually did slow down on the movement. Wedge the one piston with easier movement into place, then apply air pressure to give the other free movement until it's out. Again, keep those fingers away from the pistons. The one piston is out, and as you can see, the dust boot came out with it. With the other piston still in place, pull it out by hand, then remove the dust boot. The one that moves easier, as long as it is close to being removed, it tends to be easier to remove by hand. Using a wire brush, remove any loose dirt or rust, Use a standard screwdriver or a pick to remove any debris around the dust seal groove area. Then using a mini wire brush, clean the slot for the dust boot, removing any debris which helps the seal seat properly. Now remove the fluid seals using the standard screwdriver. Wash the caliper with brake cleaner again to remove any debris and fluid residue. 
Use 600 grit or higher scuffing pads to clean around the dust boot area and fluid seal area. Wash away any dirt or dust using brake cleaner. As for the pistons, again if there is any damage such as excessive rusting, pitting or scrapes, they must be replaced. Using the brass wire brush to clean up any debris, make sure the slot for the dust boot is clean. After that, use a 1000 grit or higher scuffing pad to clean up the surface and finish up with a light metal polishing compound to remove any baked on debris. Then is the reassembly of the new seals and boots as previously. Install the newly rebuilt caliper, ensure those pistons are fully retracted. Make sure the slide pins are moving freely. I do have a video for lubrication procedures, so be sure to check that out for more information. Tighten up those slide pin bolts and torque to the correct factory specification. You may need to clean the ends of the brake line with brake cleaner. This will help remove any residue and it's easier to detect if you have a leak present. This style of line with a block connection uses two crush washers. Crush washers only have a one-time use. I bought a kit with various sizes, replace the existing crush washers with the correct size. One goes between the block and caliper, and the other goes between the block and banjo bolt. Torque the banjo bolts to the correct factory specifications, install the caliper for the opposite side as well, and finally remove the locking pliers on the flexible line. Considering I'm only working with the front on this particular truck, the brake circuit is split between the front and rear, so the front only needs to be bled. There are various methods for bleeding brakes. This can be done manually using a vacuum pump, which I have here, or using a pressure bleeder. Always start with the furthest wheel first from the master cylinder. This would be the passenger side. Connect the vacuum bleeder. I'm going up to 30 inches of mercury. Don't let it drop past 5 inches of mercury. Always make sure there is negative pressure at the bleeder, otherwise you can risk introducing air into the system. Crack the bleeder screw and let the fluid flow. Pump the vacuum pump as needed. Being that this is older fluid, I am also flushing the front circuit just to be safe. Always check the master cylinder reservoir fluid level. It should never go below the minimum line. Add fluid when needed with the required type for your vehicle. Keep an eye on the clear line. You'll most likely see bubbling as there can always be a leak around the bleeder screw or hose which is normal. However, the bubbling will typically lessen when it's removed from the system or the fluid may be completely solid. Then tighten the bleeder screw and move on to the opposite side with the same procedure. I will have an updated video on using a vacuum pump for bleeding your brakes in the future so be sure to keep an eye out for that. When done, test the pedal feel. The pistons will need to be pushed out so it may sink to the bottom on the first couple pumps. After that it should be firm with no sinking and check the brake fluid level in the master cylinder reservoir. Tighten the master cylinder reservoir cap. Finally check for any leaks around the pistons, bleeder screw and flex lines. Once no leaks are present, reinstall the wheels and you're officially done. New videos released every week on my channel. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button. It's a huge help to me and leave a comment below if you found this tutorial helpful. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to also hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching.